so I'm running out of space. I'm going to have to move some of these plants that are going outside today. this guy up so that he does not spill seeds <laughs> okay we're getting there we're more than halfway down I will leave him until later let's see ah this is a new variety that we are trying this is from Johnny select seeds um, last year we grew a watermelon and it was okay I have dirt everywhere here <laughs> um, it was okay uh, this one I was looking for something different to be honest this is called Natsu Coco it's an F1 hybrid and it's a watermelon and they are awesome they are awesome, uh, supposedly. I mean, I'm, I'm taking their word for it. The ones I grew last year were okay. We had moderate luck with them. They were okay, but I heard from a bunch of people that their watermelons were not as tasty last year as they sometimes are. So we decided to switch watermelons. We do not do seedless watermelons. We don't have a problem with spitting out watermelons, seeds. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, we're just going to plant a regular seeded watermelon, and we'll see how that goes again. We're just trying, we're trying different varieties. We haven't been totally in love or totally hating any particular variety that we've grown. I mean, they've all been edible, but not stellar. So over the years, I think we've tried two or three, because we didn't really grow watermelons years ago. We just decided we would because... We found that in Arizona, getting good, flavorful watermelons was a lot harder than any place else we've ever lived. So we decided, since we couldn't buy them, we would grow them. And uh, it worked, but we're trying another one this year. The uh, seeds are kind of funny because they call them Natsu Coco. And this honestly looks like um, a coffee au lait sort of a thing, like a, a latte sort of color. It's a... Uh, it's not as dark as some pumpkin seeds are, or as light. I mean, you, know, you, see, you tend to sort of get this weird variety of colors sometimes with certain plants. And this is kind of neither of those. <laughs> so uh, it is kind of funny. You can tell it's definitely a different variety. Let's see. So this is Natsu Coco. Natsu. Sounds very Japanese. I didn't, I don't remember if they told us anything about it. It may be a, uh, originally have been a Japanese variety. Is possible. Mm. I'm going to move you down here. <laughs> Since you're going someplace today anyway. <laughs> I need to have some place to put these guys. Because they're going to need to be watered. Yes, okay. Who else is left? Ah, White Star, Patty Pan. We really like Patty Pan squash, and so far, White Star has been our favorite. These are older seeds, so I'm going to plant a bunch in the hope that I will get something out of them. Um, i trying to think if it was last year or the year before last. I was looking at the fact that some of my seeds were older. And this happens a lot with, uh, with good quality seeds. You'll think, well, let's see, these are a couple of years old, so I'll, I'll plant more. <laughs> and then every single seed comes up and you're like, uh-oh. Um, I do have enough people that I know in this area now that uh, 
would probably be willing to take a, a spare seedling if I had one, as long as they could figure a place to put it in their own garden. So I'm not too worried about that. I would say these are probably, yeah, half inch to inch deep. Okay, I thought that was the case. The big seeds like this are usually, usually come with that sort of a rule. So I'll be squishing them in. I'm going to put two in each container and cross my fingers that I get at least one plant. It's nice to have two plants, but my goal is usually to have at least two of everything because around here the chance of something will eat something is pretty high. So I like to have a fallback position in case something gets eaten or smashed to death by a hailstorm or something. Do not leave your garden markers open. They will dry easily. And then you have a problem. So, yeah, I just uh, am very careful about that. I, they dry as fast as, you know, a lot of your Sharpies and stuff, sometimes a little faster. I think they probably have more solids in their ink in order to not fade. So... You don't want to lose that uh, alcohol that's keeping everything functional. And that's exactly what will happen if you leave them open. Okay, we have left mm, cucumbers and squash and red noodles. I'm debating. I may not plant the red noodles inside. I'm really hoping that I can plant the cucumbers into the greenhouse. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Henry says he's got some ideas. So we'll see. <laughs> we haven't discussed those ideas yet. <laughs> seeds in. I need more labels. I managed to misplace some of my used labels. It's possible that some of them finally died of old age. I know I did have some in that greenhouse die of old age. The heat in there just kind of makes them go away faster. Okay. So, these are brand new seeds, I think. Yeah, they are. Cool. Uh, this is Tasty Jade, which is our favorite type of cucumber. I shouldn't say our, because I don't eat cucumbers. But Henry loves them. They produce a... These are a really long cucumber. They produce a long, straight cucumber, similar to some of the Japanese greenhouse cucumbers or the English cucumbers. 
they are virtually seedless. Even if you miss one on the plant, they don't normally get really seedy. And uh, we've been very happy with them. I tried them in the garden. I have grown them in the garden before. And um, they worked. But our preference is to actually grow them in the greenhouse and trellis them up inside the greenhouse. It just, they will produce until usually November in the greenhouse when things finally really freeze. And it's pretty amazing. It really is. So, yeah. Well, that's it for now. I'm gonna, I've decided I'm going to wait and plant some of the red noodles outside. Those are a uh, pole beam. We have trouble with pole beans here. The uh, rodents will wait till they're nice and happy, and then they'll eat them. They'll cut the root. They'll cut the uh, stems on them. But I love red noodle. Red noodle is a um, Asian. What do they call them? Yard long bean, and uh, they are just a lot of fun in terms of stir fry and stuff like that. They produce. Each flower node sort of thing will give you two beans usually. Once in a while more, but usually it's two. And it's, you know, the beans are um, like a foot long, sometimes even longer before they start to get tough. So something about that long. And I just cut them into pieces. And they're really good for stir fry. Love them, love them. I've tried Gita, which is a green variety of uh, yard long noodles. They're good. They definitely have a different flavor, but they're a little too close to regular green beans that are bush beans that I would grow. So if I'm going to grow something, I want a unique flavor. I prefer the unique flavor. So, yep, there we go. That's it for today. I may plant some other odd bits and pieces later, but that's, that's the majority of what I'm doing. And this is, this is going to be an interesting experiment. We're seeing other people planting late gardens. Obviously, if you plant the late garden, depending on how soon you have your frost in the fall, there is always a danger that you will not get all the things you want out of it. We have the ability, because we have row covers in stock at all times, to cover our veggies in the fall. Usually, our first date of frost, I think, is supposed to be October 15th. And the last couple of years, it's been a little earlier than that. But there, it's interesting. You know, it varies from year to year. There's times when you get frost but it's not enough to kill things like tomato plants. And then there's other times when you're, you know, it's 22 degrees and it stays that way for three days. <laughs> Believe me, everything outside is totally frozen to death at that point, except for cabbages and stuff like that. They're fine. They're just kind of going, oh, it's finally cool enough for me to be happy. <laughs> but yeah, your tomatoes and stuff won't make it through that. So we'll see what happens. I mean, there's no way to know until it happens, and I think it's well worth the risk. So you'll just have to come back and see what happens. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, because obviously we're going to be doing a lot. And don't forget that there is a, an affiliate link for Haas Tools. So if you need anything from Haas, be sure to use it. That way they know that you learned about them through us. And they appreciate that. And yeah, there's uh, just a lot of experimentation. It, there's always experimentation here. We're always trying new varieties. And then we do give you feedback on what we thought of the varieties. Were they sturdy enough for our environment? This is a very harsh environment. Were they tasty enough? Because just because something makes a tomato doesn't mean the tomato tastes particularly good. We've had some in the past that were just plain bland. Then we don't grow them anymore. I don't care how pro prolific they are. I don't want bland. I can get that at the grocery store. <laughs> so, 
Yep, until next time. Don't you jump up on there. He says, looking at me like, you're not watching me, are you? Yes, I am. You're not supposed to be on the sideboard, so don't go there. <laughs> Cats are fun sometimes. So, bye. And keep on brainstorming, because obviously we are, and we're always glad to share results with you.